Um, praise the Lord. I felt led to, take, to teach on meditation tonight because meditation, poor thing, gets a bad rap. A lot of people and a lot of Christians, when they hear the term meditation, they have bad thoughts about it. The reason being, most of the time when we hear about meditation, people are talking about Eastern meditation. And Eastern meditation is basically demonic. And so, a lot of the saints don't want to hear anything about meditation, don't want to hear anybody talk about it or teach on it. But it's very, very important for us to understand meditation because it's very, very important. And that's why I feel that I was led to teach on this tonight. Um, one of the things that I found, well, first of all, let's do a little, a little definition. Unger's Bible Dictionary says that meditation is a deliberate reflection upon some spiritual truth or mystery. It also, the word meditate, or some translation of the word meditate, is in the Bible 23 times. So it's a very biblical word for those that are nervous about talking about meditation. It's a Bible term. The word meditate in the Hebrew can actually mean to speak, to muse, groan, devise. At one point, it can even mean to sing. Okay. Strong says that this word means to murmur, to ponder, to imagine, to speak, and to study. Now, what's interesting is when you study meditation biblically, um, this word uh, in Psalms 1 and 2, it points out, it says, uh, and in his word, doth we meditate day and night. That word meditate there is the word Hagah. And I mentioned there can mean to speak, to muse, to groan, or to devise. Now, what's interesting here is that um, when you study, you find that meditation has a connection to speaking. And I never, I wasn't aware of that. So, one of the definitions from meditation in the Hebrew means to speak. So, and when you think about it, it makes sense. Because when you're meditating on something, going on, which can also mean um, a deep contemplation of scripture and turning that scripture around over and over in your mind. Okay? Mm. With the purpose of gaining a greater understanding and being changed by God's truth. So, if you're quietly thinking over a passage of scripture, bit by bit, and going over every word slowly, mm -hmm. and praying over it, you've been meditating. Amen? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that, though. So I, so I wanted to make sure that we have an understanding of that. And I'm going to give you an example from a cow, from from a cow's stomach, as how as to, as to how we can have a greater understanding of meditation. Let's go, to Joshua one and eight. Joshua one and eight. Oh, just. Oh, good. Joshua 1 and 8. This is a very, very well-known verse of scripture, and we are very, very familiar with Joshua 1. But I'm going to read it, read it for you anyway.
Yeah. All right. So we're going to look at Joshua 1 and 8, Psalms 1, 19 to 78, and we're going to look at Psalms 77, 11 through 13. It's just a few places where the Bible mentions meditation. Bianca, we're teaching about meditation, biblical meditation. Okay. And I was just teaching, right before you got here, that most of the time when we hear, hear someone speak of meditating or meditation, they're talking about Eastern meditation, you know, meditation from over in the Eastern countries. And that's really demonic. Okay. But the Bible teaches us about meditation. And that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about tonight. The word meditation or some occurrence of a translation of the word meditation is in the Bible 23 times. So it's about so meditation is a is a biblical word. Very quickly, I mentioned this earlier, but for your sake, Bianca, Unger's Bible dictionary says that meditation is a deliberate reflection upon some spiritual truth or or mystery. As I mentioned, it can actually mean to speak, to muse, to groan, or to devise. Um, Strong says that the word means to murmur, to ponder, to imagine, to speak, and to study. Now, what's interesting is as you study about meditation and look at the words in the Bible, it's interesting that the definition here, when you look it up, connects to speaking. So there is a direct connection between meditating and speaking. So biblical meditation is deep contemplation or thinking, turning over and over something, a scripture in your mind. Okay, so, so the first one wasn't a biblical meditation, the first one was just meditation, yeah, period. Yeah, well, I, what I was talking about, most of the time when we hear meditation, they're talking about Eastern meditation, like chanting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Not having any any connection to the Bible or to the Lord, okay. But the word is a biblical word. When you look in the Bible, as I mentioned, you see the word meditation or some translation of that word in the Bible twenty three times. So what that means is that meditation is a biblical concept. But it gets a bad rap because most most of the time when you hear somebody talk about meditation, they're talking about Eastern meditation, chanting, stuff like that. But meditation is a biblical word. And for us, we can look at, at uh, meditation as deep contemplation, turning over in your mind a scripture over and over and over again for you to gain greater understanding of it and to ultimately be changed by the truth of God's word. So, what you probably didn't know, Bianca, is you probably done meditation in the Bible before yourself and didn't know that you were doing it. If you ever looked at a scripture, thought about it, kind of pondered it, went over it over and over again, that's meditation. Okay? So, I'm going to read Joshua 1, 1 and 8 to you. This book of the law shall not depart out of, my, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou, that thou, mayest, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So Joshua 1 8 tells us that meditation constantly so that you can you can observe what the bible is saying to you brings prosperity isn't that interesting it says on joshua said on your word you shall meditate day and night that or that's the purpose of it thou mayest observe to do all things that are written written therein so meditation tells you one the first thing it says is that you know what to do. Amen? It says, so you meditate in the word, you want to do what you want to do what the Bible tells you to do. 
says to observe, to do according to all that is written therein. So one of the reasons for doing meditation, the first one that we see here, is to know what you ought to do. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you so you can do what the Bible says, what was the, what is written in the Bible. It said, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have a good success. People are always want to be successful and always want to be prosperous. I got it right here for you. Joshua 1 and 8. You meditate. You turn the scriptures over and over and over again in your mind. Look at it. Ask God to give you clarity on it. Quietly think on the scripture over and over. And the Bible says, then you will make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. Isn't that interesting? Everybody want to be successful, and it's right here in the Bible. And it hooks up to meditation. Are y'all following? Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. And I wanted to make sure that we... Um, had a, had, had a better clarity of that. Let's go to Psalm 1 and 2. Let's go back there. Right Psalm 1 and 2. We are going to, most of us know Psalms 1 and 1, but we're going to hit on 2 because here, here again we talk about meditation. I'll do one and one and one and two. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. What but I meant on Psalms, Psalms, Psalms one, one and two, and verses one and two. Psalms one. Psalms one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly. No. Where are you? Psalms 1. I know. <laughs> what, what translation is it being working? Oh, okay, I see. I know that. Um, I know the verse is just like, that ain't what that, that's not, uh -uh, that's, that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. See um, if you can pull it up in the KJV. Well, I guess it, it's the way it's being stated. Oh, okay, um, what, you got King James? Have King James. Oh, so okay. if I transfer over to what you're saying, I'll go. I'll go into King James. Yeah, let's. Cause I. Oh, oh okay. There's yeah, New Living Translation. Okay, I don't uh, want to go Bible. It's okay. Yeah, okay, I got it. Because exactly. I heard the verse before. I was okay, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, but well, this, why this ain't singing it? Because it's, it's, okay. it's a different <laughs> it's translation. A different translation. So yeah. It's a different translation. Sometimes Holman will you start go. close to King James, but okay. not all the way. Psalms 1 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, or the Bible for us today, and in his law of the Bible doth he meditate day and night. Now Joshua talked about meditating day and night too. So evidently, meditation is something that you shouldn't just do er, er now and then. Because Joshua talked about day and night. And the Psalms talked about day and night. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then Joshua talked about this brings success, good success, and prosperity. I guess that's just communion with the Lord, like you just spend the time with him and his word yes. as you spend yes. time with him. Yes, yes. As you look at the word, as you look at the scriptures, and you want to get more clarity on it, and you're looking at it, and you're looking at each word, and, and, and you're concentrating and contemplating on it, that's meditation. Okay. okay? Like I said, we've all done meditation before, we just didn't know what it meant. And that's why I felt led to teach on it today. And the thing that's most that's really interesting to me is that um, Joshua points out that's how to win in life. Yeah. You can be 
prosperous, have good success through the Bible and meditating on it. And you don't hear people talk about that. When was the last, last time you heard them? Uh, okay, okay, saints, turn with me to Joshua 1 and we're going to talk about meditation. When was the last time you heard that teaching? Hmm? But you ought to be, this should be taught a lot more because you see prosperity and, and, and good success and all that kind of good stuff is hooked up in there. Go to Psalms 1, 1978. And then I'm going to give you a practical understanding. He said Psalms what? 1978. Mm -hmm. Psalms 1978. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But I will meditate in my precepts. Amen. So you see two things going on in the 78, 78 verse. It says that the proud don't deal right. They deal wrongly with me and don't have any reason to. But as you're being treated badly, the scripture tells you what to do. Meditate in thy precepts or in the Bible or what the Bible says. So here we go again. This is why I do this need to be taught a whole lot more. This tells you how to deal with folk talk about you. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody saying teach, teach, teach Elder Colbert. It said the proud, let the proud be ashamed for they deal perversely or wrongly or badly with me without a cause. So when people are talking about you, say you had to be, or something bad about you, what do you do? The psalmist said, meditate in the word. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hmm? So we didn't know that. Let's... Uh, Look at them. why people take offense because they don't turn and begin immediately to meditate in what God exactly. So now we see how to get a better hold of yourself and not want to hit hit somebody and get upset with them. You meditate in the Word of God. Um, and when I realized, because I was going to teach something else, but then when the, when the Lord really began to deal with me about this, um, I really began to understand how this whole thing how this whole thing works. Okay, and where are we turning Hold on a second. I think I'm gonna go um the Psalm 77, 11, 13 instead of that. Psalm 77, 11 through 13. Right behind where you were before, I assume. 77. I'm going back a little bit behind uh, Psalm 119. Got it? Mm -hmm. I will remember the works of the Lord. Truly I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Hallelujah. So this is saying that um, as you're looking in the word of God and you see what God has done, 
you begin to meditate on his words. Amen? Mm -hmm. And we see why we see why meditation is important but I, I find it interesting that we don't hear people teach on it. As I mentioned, which is why I felt I felt led to talk about it, you know, particularly when you're talking about being successful as you meditate in the Word of God. Now, I, I'm going to show you a verse that connects to meditation in the New Testament. Let's go to Luke. 2445, one of my very, very favorite verses. And this is a verse you might want to jot this one down. He said Luke what? Luke 2445. You might want to jot this verse down when you're trying to memorize scripture, when you're trying to have an understanding of a verse. This is the verse to use and pray to the Lord. Y'all ready? Mm -mm. <laughs> Psalm, I mean Luke 24, 45. Okay. okay. He's talking about Jesus. Then opened he their understanding, this Jesus, that they might understand the scriptures. Huh? Huh? Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So, this is a wonderful verse. If he did it for them, he can do it for you. If there's a scripture that you're having a problem understanding, you pray and you say, Lord, Open my understanding, like you said in Luke 24, 45, that I might understand the scriptures. Pray that. Amen. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. And then meditate. Look at the verse. Go over and over and over it and over and over it. And pray this verse over it. Okay? One of the things that you want to understand, and I'm going to use the analogy of a cow. I used to teach that, a, they used to say, when you studied this, they used to say that a cow had two stomachs, but I found that a cow actually has four stomachs. That's the latest. Um, have you ever looked at certain animals like Goats, cows, look like they always chewing, don't they? Mm -hmm. Look like look like they constantly chewing, yep. all the time. All the time, yeah. All right. Now, these animals are called ruminants. You might want to write this down: R U M I N A N T S. Ruminants. R U M I N A N T S. These animals, like cows and uh, animals that you see stay chewing all the time, they are called ruminants. Okay? They're able to acquire nutrients from the plants that they eat by fermenting these plants in their stomach, in a specialized part of the stomach, prior to digestion. Okay? Um, the process of reach of like eating some grass, it goes down into one of the stomachs, these are the ruminants, then it comes back up and you chew it again. Are y'all with me? And as you ch keep chewing it, you get more nutrients out of it. That's similar to what you're doing with the word. Huh? You can look at your mind as the first stomach. You look at something, you go, oh, let me think about that. 
And you think about it. And you think about it. And then it drops down into your spirit. You with me? Mm -hmm. And as you are chewing, it goes down in the first stomach, and then it comes back up again, and you chew it some more, and then it goes into the last part of the stomach. Are you with me? That's how rumination or chewing of the cud works. The, you chew the vegetation, you get something out of it, goes down in the first part of the stomach, and actually goes all around, and then it comes back up, and you chew on it on some more. That's what you do with the word. You chew it. You think about it. Our stomachs will be our mind, our spirit. Mind our and heart. your spirit, yes. Yes. And your heart? Well, heart could go in there too. Because actually, they used, they, they used to think that the cow only had two stomachs. But there are actually four different, four different parts to, to, the, to the stomachs. There are, if you, want, if you like this kind of stuff. You got the uh, reticulum, well, excuse me. First, you got the rumen, R U M E N. That's the first part. Then you got the reticulum, the amosum, that receives the, the cud and absorbs, and uh, absorbs the fatty acids. And then the A B O M A S U M AB. Amasum, that's the true stomach. Okay. I'll spell it again. A B. So that's where everything finally. That's where it up. finally winds up. A B O M A S U M. Okay. So the first two chambers of the stomach are called the rumen and the reticulum. Okay. Then. Then, then as it's as the cud is regurgitated and you chew it, is mixing with the saliva and breaking out and breaking down the particle size. So what this whole process is doing actually is making the particle size of the of the vegetation that the ruminant is eating smaller and smaller mm -hmm. in the stomach for you to get more nutrients out of. So, as you meditate on the Word of God and chew on it in the Spirit, it goes into your first two sections of your spiritual stomach, your mind and your soulish area. Here the Bible is just in your head, doesn't do any real good. But that Word is then brought back up and is chewed some more, meditated upon. So you're saying mind, soul, soul, spirit, and then heart. Yeah. Then uh, it goes into the second two sections of the spiritual stomach of your spirit. So this is where the word is hid in your heart so that I might not sin against thee. So you can look at the soulish first two sections mind mind soulish area in the second two sections as the spirit and heart so the word really doesn't do you any good until it gets to the second two sections of the spiritual stomach which connects to your spirit this is why some people have a problem retaining script the scripture because they're trying to do it in their head and not letting it get into their spirit and their heart. The food eaten by the cow is not digested until it goes into the second section of the stomach. That's the omasum and the abomasum. So the third one is O-M-A-S-U-M. That, that receives the cud after you chew on it. And then that last part is the true stomach. The abomasum, which would be analogous to spirit and heart. Okay? So, 
as you meditate on the word of God, chew on it in the spirit, it goes into the first section, as I mentioned, that's the rumen and the reticulum. And then it winds up in those last two that I mentioned, the, the obasum and the abomasum. So, now you have a, a, a working, better working understanding of how this meditation works. It's just like a, ch a cow chewing his cud. Goes down, bring it back up. And it goes down into that, those last two sections of, of the stomach, which is analogous to spirit and heart. And that's where you get the nutrients, if you will, or the real understanding. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everybody follow? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Hope y'all got something out of that. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Okay, so that was a teaching on meditation. 